I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. You are like a light for the whole world. Make your light shine so that others will see the good that you do and will praise your Father in heaven. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Until we realize we are points of light, the light within us remains hidden. And until we step into the dark places, the world around us will remain dim. Once we choose to unleash it, the radiance will be blinding, and the darkness will have no place to hide. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. But now you are light, but now in, the you Lord. Are light you in the Lord. You are light in the Lord. Light in the Lord. Live as children of light.
Yeah. 
Because of Jesus, my heart is clean. So I will rise and lift my head. For by His mercy, my life was spared. The highest name has set me free. Because of Jesus, my heart is clean Greetings again, uh, everybody at OCAC family And welcome again to another um, a time where we can listen to the message today and uh, I, I really, really, really miss uh, being able to meet each other in person. And I'm just hoping and praying that we're all still uh, doing um, our best, uh, hoping in the Lord and knowing that uh, whatever uh, feelings we may be having right now regarding um, uh, I was, I was going to say home detention, but I'm thinking more like lockdown and everything else that we know that this is all just temporary and that one day we will be forever reunited with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's something I'm looking forward to. And I think that's something I need to keep reminding myself because sometimes we tend or we if you lose focus of the eternal that's when the uh, the stuff that happens day to day um, in our in our city, our world, our our life, our families tends to overwhelm our hope in Christ. But I'm just glad that we're here today, and I'm hoping and still praying that all of us are still being able to be on mission. Um, and and as I shared last time, uh, I was. Uh, praying that we can be given imagine, imaginative ways where we can be on mission. And I believe we can because God gave us imagination. Okay, He gave us imagination, not just to daydream during lockdown, but to actually imagine uh, proactive and practical ways that we can be on mission. And I'm looking forward to uh, our time again where we can be together together. Um, Whenever that is, like I'm not even looking, I'm not even going to count down the days anymore. I'm just saying, God, when your time is right, when you ordain the government to allow us to be back together, then that's the perfect time for us to come back together. And uh, I'm a bit excited because today I'll be bringing part two of the series uh, called on Before Jesus Returns. And last time I shared, we looked at the first two signs before Jesus returns. And the first being the increase in natural disasters and about the wars and rumors of wars. And we actually see that uh, in the warning of Jesus in uh, Matthew 24. But before I continue, let me just pray for us today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you once again for this opportunity to meet like this. Lord, we know it almost feels the normal to have church like this. But Father, I pray that as we are uh, scattered in our homes this week, that you continue to remind us that the church is not just a one day a week thing or a building, but we, your children, are your church. So whatever part of a local community of believers we belong to, here at, here at Wakak, we belong to the Wakak local church. But for anyone else who may come across this message today, God, that you'll just remind them that for a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, is already a part of the church. So we pray that you'll just help us to keep on mission, to keep going, to keep striving uh, for the ultimate prize of seeing you face to face, Jesus. That no, nothing will uh, put us down. I know sometimes life can be discouraging, 
but Holy Spirit, you dwell in us as your, as, as your children, that you'll just remind us that we are more than conquerors because Christ has already conquered. He has already overcome the world that is throwing so many things at us today. So help us to remember that we are um, overcomers and we are conquerors through Christ. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. So, as I mentioned earlier, today is part two of the message series before Jesus returns. And as I was saying that to, um, the first two signs were before Jesus returns. Uh, the first one was about uh, natural disasters and rumors of wars. And we actually see that in Matthew uh, chapter 24, 6 to 8. And this is Jesus actually speaking to his disciples where he says, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of birth pains. And... Just this morning, uh, before I started recording this message, a uh, quick scan of the news websites, and we hear that Taiwan is now gearing up um, in defense against invasion from the mainland. So it's a, it's a rumor. Again, it's, it's, it's in the Bible. Um, and then we hear of what's happening still in Afghanistan. And you know, it's, 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 it's a tragedy um, that there's still this upheaval um, between kingdom of vices in the kingdom of the Taliban, and they're still fighting for reign over uh, the country. And was it about three weeks ago when we we had that quake, um, the earthquake here in Melbourne? And um, me being a natural disaster nerd, I keep checking out the website, and <laughs> lo and behold. I think last count, there's been about 30 to 40 aftershocks. I know it sounds shocking, but most of those aftershocks were below um, three um, and below magnitude on the Richter scale, which means it will only be felt locally. So you know, th the main quake that happened a couple of weeks ago was a 5.9. That was about 180 k's east of, northeast of Melbourne. So we felt that because it was strong, but the aftershocks are numerous but they're quite small. So we, I don't think there's any risk, um, well, who's to say anyway, um, of any more aftershocks here in Melbourne. So we know that the wars, and more importantly, the birth pains are increasing. And we see that every day. And like, uh, if you are like me, well, I don't know if you are like me, but I keep watching um, on YouTube channels uh, that update uh, keep updates on what is happening globally with natural disasters. And they pair it, though, with how the good news is being shared to the masses who haven't heard Jesus yet, or who haven't heard of Jesus yet. So there'll be um, all of this happening. And the second sign was the changes in the church. And we, we if, if, if you remember... The warning about false prophets and teachers within the church were paralleled um, to the false messiahs and the false Christs outside the church. And that was given to us in Matthew 24, 45, when this is actually Jesus saying, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many so that's a warning jesus is already warning his believers and if you continue from verses 9 to 14 of that same uh, chapter 24 in matthew and this is what it says then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me at that time many will turn away from the faith and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom 
will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And what does it say? And then the end will come. So despite the warnings that Jesus has given us, we know that once the good news of who he is and why he came in the first place, while we celebrate Christmas, will be so not that scattered, but the, it will be given, it will be sent, it will be preached to all nations, to all ethnic groups, and then the end will come. What an encouraging reminder. And then today, we'll be discovering what the last two major signs that Jesus gave from this passage that must happen before he returns. The third being the events in Jerusalem and the fourth being the supernatural signs in the sky. So as you're still with me, hopefully you're still with me, we're not gonna go into the sign, the third sign, events in Jerusalem. Last Sunday, we were given uh, a message. We were able to hear a message from Pastor Nelson as he shared on us. He shared, sorry, he shared with us on another major sign before Jesus returns. That sign being about the mark of the beast. And I actually, um, you know, before I prepare the recording with Pastor Nelson, we actually have a chat of updates of what's going on. And after we recorded, I actually told him, it's really amazing how the Holy Spirit has ordained these messages um, in, a, in a series. And I didn't even tell him um, what I've been speaking about because he's, a, he's quite busy preparing his messages for the other churches he speaks at as well in, uh, in, uh, in our sister church in press that he leads. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing how it wasn't um, that his first message that he shared when we were still together. Do you remember what it was? I wish you could see people's hands going up. But it was as in the days of Noah. And he didn't actually know that I was going to I was already planning a series about that same topic. Coincidence? I don't think so. I think it's more of a God incidence. It's a God ordained uh, thing. The Holy Spirit was preparing everyone. Even when my and even when my, my dad, Pastor Rami, shared, it was still on the same series, the same topic. What's gonna happen or the urgency? Uh, what we need to do before Jesus returns. And last week, uh, when Pastor Nelson touched on the mark of the beast, it fit. I thought it fits nicely in between the messages that I have been sharing. You see, the mark of the beast is something that has garnered a lot of discussion lately. This COVID pandemic has heightened the fear of the mark of the beast. But you see, as Pastor Nelson shared last week, this is just the priming. We are being prepared for a system where one day there will be a one world government led by this beast. And this beast, as we have heard last Sunday, is another refer reference to the Antichrist. But he won't be revealed in that way from the very start because we know that this beast will have supernatural power and he will have such charisma as almost to hypnotize the world leaders the nations in submission to his power and we've had a lot of world leaders that have come and gone before in our history of humanity that have possessed such charisma such a gift of influence, uh, you know, people go, oh, and when they hear the name, oh, he was a great president, oh, he was a great leader, depending on which side you're coming from, obviously. But none of these people actually possess the supernatural abilities to perform signs and wonders. And as we learned last week from the book of Daniel in um, chapter 7, 
uh, 1 to 8, it was a parallel of Revelation 13, 11, that this beast will be a counterfeit Jesus, the ultimate of false Christs, the ultimate in false messiahs. And the sad, well, the tragic thing is he will mock and blaspheme everything good and righteous about Jesus our Lord. And it is in Second Thessalonians, if you're following still with me, hopefully you are, chapter 2, 2 to 4, where he, was, he has been referred to as the man of lawlessness. And this is what it says in reference to the passage. I'll be reading from Second Thessalonians 2, 1 to 4, where it, this is what it says. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. You see, a lot of people today, or not today, but a lot of people that I've heard who have claimed that the second coming has already happened, miss that point. And we see that the Antichrist has to declare he himself is God before Jesus returns. And as we see, the most blasphemous thing this man will do is to proclaim himself to be God in what is going to be in Jerusalem, the new temple. The new temple, which was destroyed uh, in the time, this time scale of history, uh, I think when they were, um, I think the Romans, they, 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 they had two temples built in Jerusalem. The first one was destroyed by the Romans, and the second one was destroyed, sorry, the first one was destroyed by the Babylonians, I believe. I'm sorry if I'm getting my history wrong. I'm not a history buff. And the second one was destroyed by the Romans. Um, and now they're like, the Jewish people are now yearning to build the third temple. And, you know, when this is built, you see, Jerusalem, because of all of this, Jerusalem has been a cup of trouble to the world. There has been so much tension. And anyone who has control of this city believes they have the power. See, the Islamic and the Christian world clashed for centuries in the bloody and very messy crusades. And today, as the world holds its breath about the very real prospect of a new temple being built, for someone to proclaim himself as God will prove to the world that he is, in fact, the Antichrist. He will desolate God's temple with this blasphemy and only then will the world know that he is not the Messiah and I want to read now from 2 Thessalonians 2 8 to 12 and this is what it says concerning what's going to happen after and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are per perishing. The per they perish because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth 
but have delighted in wickedness. Wow, I could just imagine. See, although it seems like all doom and gloom, I love what verse 8 um, in that in that in the passage in second Thess in second Thessalonians 2 it provides a glimpse of redemption the redemption that all of creation has been groaning for since the fall even though we can see that the lawless man the antichrist will be revealed but i love the second part whom the lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Oh. So yeah. I, I you know as I keep saying it's going to get darker. It's going to get even darker. You think it's dark today? Well, not physically dark, but spiritually dark. You think it's dark today it's gonna get even much more darker we think that uh you know it's it's so dark today that you know i was watching and then i i don't like naming people but to see the speaker of the house in the u.s congress nancy pelosi smiling when the pro-abortion bill was passed in the congress she's actually smiling in victory and I'm going what kind of person smiles at ripping babies apart or the fact that you know we see the attacks on the persecuted church increasing or we see the division in the church today because of vaccines so it seems to be getting darker and darker spiritually and more, but we have that hope that when the Antichrist is revealed in Jerusalem and people are thinking, oh no, could it get any worse? But we know Jesus is basically at the doorstep. And if I could... Um, uh use the words well I, I don't i don't want to say this in a disrespectful way but you know i could imagine when in the philippines in the history of the philippines when general macarthur said i shall return that was like their hope the disciples hope when jesus said i'll be back <laughs> like arnold schwarzenegger i'll be back and he will be back he will be back and goodness me if this next point of this warning doesn't give us chills of excitement then i don't know what will because the next sign i want to share with you with everyone today is a sign number four the supernatural signs in the sky and now this is where all the crux of all human history comes to this point the point at which the revelation of the second coming of jesus will be revealed if you have your bibles open still if you have matthew 24 verses 27 to 31 and this was what it says for as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west so will be the coming of the son of man wherever there is a carcass there the vultures will gather immediately after the distress of those days the sun will be darkened the, and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 
and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the heavens to the other. You see, it's almost Christmas. <laughs> And you're thinking, what does that got to do with the supernatural signs in the sky? Well, and you know me, I love Christmas. And you see, when Jesus first came to the world as God incarnate, as God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, he was revealed only to a select few. His earthly parents, the shepherds, and we know three years later to the Magi in Egypt, the wise men or the three kings, as the story goes. And when Jesus came, he turned the world upside down, or maybe you're right side up. And he is still doing this because his church. His disciples continue to live counter-culturally, representing a kingdom not of this earth. So as a church looks for a second coming, according to scripture, when Jesus does come back, there will be no mistaking that he has returned. You see, as Mary gave birth to the Son of God on the first Christmas night, when Jesus returns, the upheaval in the birth pains will finally cease when he is unveiled in glory. As Mary was having the birth pains, the world is now having that same birth pains as well. And verse 27 of Matthew 24 does not mince its words. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. When Jesus returns, it's not going to be a localized event. It's not going to be him just returning to one city. Only you know, when when he came was and he was born in, in Bethlehem. It was not going to be like that when he returns in the, in the second coming. The whole world will see this amazing display of lightning from where's my directions? From the east to the west. This lightning will just be displayed and it's going to be like if you, I think people will be thinking what is going on because this supernatural lightning will be flashing constantly across the sky as the imminent return of the king of kings is ushered in and soon after this lightning breaks all over the world the sun will be darkened the moon will not give its light and we know the moon reflects the sun the sun's light so if the sun is darkened if it's daytime in australia and it's nighttime in the other side of the world and they had the, the full moon both will, go, will will not shine it'll be like instantly the sun going out and i've never experienced a solar a full solar eclipse but those who have said, they've told me, it's eerie to see day turn to night. And even those who've experienced a severe thunderstorm where the bright summer's day turns to night, or even perhaps those who've experienced a huge volcano unleashing a massive ash cloud that blocks the sun's light in minutes. This indeed will be a supernatural sight to behold. But that's not the end of it. 
it further tells us stars will fall and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. You see, there's still some, I've read more into this and there's actually a lot of debate to what this is saying. They're saying that this is all just a figurative um, in its description of God's judgment on the earth. But yeah, it's, it could be figurative. Some people say these stars are going to be actually comets, meteors falling on earth. And that the heavenly bodies are like, you know, the planets. I don't know. This, this, is, what, this is what they're saying. I've, I've read this. And some people will actually say that the stars falling are the angels coming down, bringing the judgment. So there's a lot of still th thought on what this actually will look like. However, there's no debate to verse 30. Then will appear the sign of man, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Everyone will be mourning on earth when they see Jesus, the Son of Man, coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Wow. And as I want to always do, is we end with a challenge. So what do we do now? Do we continue being distracted by the world? Or do we continue our God-given mandate to take the gospel to the world? You see, I have not even mentioned the rapture in the messages I have been given. Because that's another message for next time. But as we continue to hold onto this glorious hope of the very imminent return of Jesus Christ, we need to continue to run the race with Jesus as the author and the perfecter of our faith. We need to continue to see people around us who do not know Jesus in light of the heart of the Father. His heart, the Father's heart, breaks for every person that doesn't know him. He wants us to usher in the great harvest of souls and he wants us to do it with such urgency that if it does not keep you up at night then we probably need a new outpouring of God's love on us for us because I believe we need God to cause our hearts to break for the thousands every day, the millions going to eternity without a savior. Like we see the natural disasters where thousands are who lose a life and perhaps millions are displaced. And we see this COVID pandemic where we, we hear reports of thousands, hundreds of thousands who have passed away. How many of them went to their eternity with Jesus? How many of them went to their eternity without Jesus? And for those of us here within the Awakak, our Awakak family. Some of us today may not be sure where we stand with Jesus. And some of us may have not even committed our lives to him and repented of our rebellion. 
repented of our sin. So can I encourage you today to make yourself right with Jesus today, to ask him to forgive your sin, to forgive your rebellion, and to say, Jesus, I need you to become Lord and Savior of my life. And I turn away from what I shouldn't be doing and what I used to do. And scripture is clear that if you believe with your heart and you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. But first, you must come to the point of repentance, of really saying, I, God, I'm so sorry for my life. I'm so sorry for my rebellion. Please forgive me. And I now know that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. And only through him can I be reconciled to you, Father. And we, here at Bukak, we know that Jesus is the only way, truth, and life. No one can come to God the Father except through Jesus Christ. And we know that there is no one else interceding for us right now in heaven than Jesus Christ himself. No saint, no other person who's gone before us can pray for us. Because they too are worshipping Jesus right now. So my encouragement to you is to get your heart ready. To get your heart set with Jesus. Because we don't know if he's going to return. It might be tomorrow that he calls us home. Together or by, by ourselves. We don't know. He, he's, he's the author of our life. So I encourage you to get right with the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ, so you too can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be able to go through this life and to be expectant with hope when these signs appear and not to be distressed as most of the people around us are like with this pandemic with the rumors of wars uh, with jobs insecurity with everything else that's happening we need to remove those distractions get your heart right with jesus and de declare that he is lord of your life you're no longer living in sin you're no longer living in rebellion but you want to start afresh. You want to start eternal life in Christ. You want to have the eternal hope through Jesus Christ. So I'm encouraging you to do that today if you haven't done so. And I'm encouraging you as well, if you already have done that, to make sure that you're also ready and prepared to encourage somebody else who has not done that yet. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you once again for this time. Lord, we know that the signs are just coming at us every day. But Father, help us as your children to not fret, to not even worry, but to see it as opportunity where we can share the hope we have. And Father, yes, yeah, sometimes we feel a bit overwhelmed especially when things shake, like the earthquake a couple of weeks ago. But Father, help us to know that these things are just the continuation of you coming soon. And that if it wakes us up, if it gets us more alert, then praise God that we can become more alert for your work. And Father, I pray as well that for those of us who do not know you yet, Jesus, that Holy Spirit, 
May the seed that has been planted today through this message, may you just water it, God. May you water it in the in the hearts of the people who are listening, and that it will just come to fruition. That they will be able to declare that they have repented and declare their faith and hope in Jesus Christ. And I also pray, Father, for those of us who already have this hope in you, that you will allow us to even be more bold, to be less fearful in declaring our hope and our salvation in Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you once again for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Jesus, we thank you that we know that your return is so soon. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for guiding us, rebuking us, and most importantly, bringing us comfort in times where we face trials, in times where we can already begin to see the signs of tribulation. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. And we pray this in your name, Jesus, at the name at which one day every knee will bow and tongue confess that you are indeed Lord. You are indeed Messiah and you are indeed Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us today. And my prayer is if you have just prayed to ask Jesus to come into your life and you have prayed to repented from your sin and you now declare boldly that he is Lord and that God the Father raised him from the dead, then you are now his child. You are now saved. And I encourage you to reach out to us here at WCAG where we can send you uh, information, resources to be able to get you on your your new journey as a child of God, as part of his eternal church, as he's redeemed um, and his uh, just, yeah, it's going to be a new journey for you. It's not going to be easy. Jesus doesn't promise a bed of roses, but he promises you eternal life. So God bless you and thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless. Lord, awake your sleeping bride. Light a candle. Shatter all the things that blind us to your call May all hands no more withhold Perfect love that we behold May it go beyond the comfort of our walls All of Jesus
to announce that we, the Canberra Declaration, are calling for a month of prayer and fasting for family. Families are important. We're very thankful to the Catholic Church. In 2016, they called for a month of prayer and fasting in October for marriage. Again, in 2017, we supported them and many churches did right across Australia. So here we are, 2021, and we're praying for family. Why? Well, the Canberra Declaration is all about marriage, faith, family, freedom, and life. We have never prayed for family in our month of prayer and fasting in October yet. So this is gonna be it. 
Last year, Pastor Peter Walker, who led us the National Solemn Assemblies, an Indigenous pastor, he said, Warwick, we need to pray for family. And so this year, we are doing just what he said, and we invite you to join with us. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, Paul speaking, says this, For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. You see, we know that there are families on this earth. We have been born, each of us, from a family. We are all part of a family. We are part of the big family. But you see, families are also in heaven. We have the Holy Family, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we are praying and fasting for marriage and for family and for children because together those are the ingredients that make up families, mothers, fathers, together in holy matrimony, loving each other, serving each other, and those children growing up to thrive and grow. The prayer points for October 2021, this month of prayer and fasting from the 1st to the 31st of October 2021, Number one, pray for the restoration of family and fatherhood in our nation. Malachi chapter four, verse six says, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Number two, pray for healing for marriages, protection for children, and the restoration of the sanctity of life. Isaiah 58 verse 12 says, and your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of streets to dwell in. Number three, pray for revival, renewal and reformation for Australia that our nation might return to God. So please join with us in this month of prayer and fasting for marriage, family and for our children and for the restoration of fatherhood. We would love you to, to partner with us. We thank you for your support, your financial support. We thank you for your prayer support. Please tell your friends about this prayer call. You can join with us every night right through from the 1st to the 31st at 8 p.m. And that will, of course, change with daylight saving time, but it'll still be 8 p.m. Sydney time and Melbourne time. We will be praying. We will also be having a time of 24 hours of prayer and worship beginning at 8 p.m. on the very first, the Friday the first, going right through to that Saturday night. Praise and worship, glorifying God and declaring Jesus Christ as Lord over Australia. So this is gonna be a very exciting time. Each day there'll be a daily devotion will come out right through to the 31st. So please register for those daily devotions. Please join with us as you're able in prayer and fast again as you are able for this time. The Lord bless you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Together, we are making a difference. Grace, 
How sweet the sound. What a So much has changed in our world lately. 疫情中这么多人失去生命，显明了生命的脆弱与短暂。Pero la asombrosa gracia y amor de Jesús es más fuerte que la vida y la muerte. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. 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 Don't wait another day.